All right, so in this video, we are going to be doing piecewise functions, the analytic view. Uh, so in the last uh, video, or another video, we talked about the geometric view. We gave an example where we wanted to model this data of uh, an infection spreading through a population that's susceptible over time. And so we had this piece here, um, and I, I redid it so it's slightly nicer looking. So this is, this was some G of T, almost wrote X again. <laughs> and then we had some H of T. And we called the whole thing, the overall whole curve, F of T. Okay? <coughs> so then our goal here, so our goal or the idea, is to represent f of t, the overall thing, as a function using the same uh, sort of general ideas, right? So the like f of t equals and all of this stuff, right? So we want to write it down with actual algebra instead of discussing how it's you know an exponential piece and then uh, a radical piece. So to make this sort of a little more concrete, I'm going to give these different these these functions and actual values you can see them show up. So let's say g of t is the function. Uh, let's say two to the t. So it's saying that it doubles every uh, t time period. I didn't give a unit, but maybe weeks or something. And h of t. This is going to be let's say the uh, square root of uh, t. So it's just a square root function. Um, I'm going to offset it a little. So let's do minus capital T. Uh, so let me actually give capital T a value as well, make this nice and concrete. So let's make capital T be, let's say, 4, as in 4 weeks. And let's make f be, let's say, 6, right? So h of t, I'm going to say, is t, uh, little t minus 4. And then it will be, uh, let's say, let's make this work. So let's make that plus 16, OK? So this will, this will should, anyway, work out where this 4, make it clear. Um, in fact, let me make it even more clear. Let's make it color coded. This is the four from there. So this is the capital T above. And you'll notice that the F hasn't shown up uh, anywhere yet. And that is, I'm looking at it a ludicrous F, but whatever, we'll keep it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so just using for concrete values. OK, so our goal then, like I said, is to write this down. So the notation is weird looking but very intuitive once you understand what's happening. So first we're going to define it just like we would any other function. We're going to give it a name, f of t, and claim that it's equal. Right? So here I'm just naming name of piecewise function. Now the way I know it's going to be piecewise function is the very next symbol, which is going to be this open brace. And notice I'm making it kind of big because I'm going to have more than one line on here. So I'm going to write out what I'm going to get, and then I'll explain why it is written this way. So my top line is going to be g of t. So in particular, it's going to be 2 to the t. And then over here, I'm going to write, um, so actually let me do sort of the more common notation rather than what I had over the other place. So. Of uh, 0 less than or equal to t less than 4, where that's my capital T. And then on the line below that, I'm going to write the h of t, which was square root of t minus, I'll write that in a second, uh, plus 16. And this is for t less than or equal to. 6, where 6 is now f, and 
this should be a 4, this should be a 4, and I have less than or equal. Okay. All right. So this is the actual piecewise function, this whole thing right here, okay? We can go through this step by step. And in fact, let me separate some pieces here, which was a little hard to see because I didn't plan this out great. So I'm, you wouldn't normally write these dotted lines, but I'm, I'm writing them so that I can point out some things, okay? So f of t here, this is the name of the piecewise function. This column, these are the actual, the actual functions. I'm putting this in quotes um, because this is the function we're talking about, but these are the functions that we're gluing together. So I should say functions um, being glued together. So this, this column here, this is the g of t and the h of t, right? So that's what these are. Whereas this column, this piece, so that's here, this column is the domains of the respective functions. So when I say domains of the respective functions, what I mean is the chunks that these things are defined on. So here, g of t was taking over from the t equals 0 up to t equals capital T or, or 4, right? So I have that g of t, 2 to the t, is happening between 0 and 4, right? So that's telling me it goes right here. Whereas the h of t, which is square root of t minus 4 plus 16, this whole thing, right? That's happening from 4 to 6, okay? Now, whether I'm using less than or equal or less than for these symbols, that's really dependent on what I am trying to do. So I will point out over here, and maybe this is kind of subtle, so I'll, I'll make them bigger, that in blue, I have both of these things as closed circles, which is why I did the less than or equal in both cases, because I'm assigning h of t to have right closed circle, they exist on those points. Whereas over here, it was closed on this one, but not closed on g, so I didn't include four. But it is possible, right, that I would have that this one was a filled in pink one, and then I would have less than or equal to four and less than four here. What's important, though, is that I don't have less than or equal to four on both because that would claim that four is in both of them, and that can get bad, and we'll see how that, how that happens, okay? So these columns then, right, so I have the functions, I have the domain. Likewise, a row, this is one of the functions, in particular g of t, and where it applies which we know as the, that is, uh, its domain, right? So that is the first row. And the second row is likewise h of t, and where it applies. i.e., that is, its domain. I guess I shouldn't use an apostrophe there, but whatever. Not in English class. <laughs> so, the analytic piece then, to make this function that we're looking at right here, the takeaway, right, the piecewise is the, each of the functions that we're using, as well as the chunk we're using it on. So we took g of t here, and then we tacked on h of t over here. So I need some way of recording that I'm using g of t and h of t, but that's not enough, because I, I need to know whether it's g of t then h of t, is it g, and t, uh, g of t until three, and then h of t from three to six, right? I need to know where they are, as well as what they are. And so g of t, I have 
and I have where g of t is. And then h of t I have, and then I have where h of t is, okay? So I need all of that information in my piecewise. And so my piecewise name, f of t, is open brace, and then a row for each piece. Now if I had like two, three, four, five functions, that would just be more rows and more pieces of where they apply. So I'd have like one function, another function, another function, another function, right? So they can get very large and unwieldy uh, if you have a lot of pieces. Here we only have the two, okay? All right. I'm going to do, in a separate video, I'm going to give examples of piecewise functions, how to graph them, and how to calculate with them, um, which will give more sort of experience and more um, examples of using this analytic form. But this is analytic piecewise functions in a nutshell.